In this episode of The COVID Debate, TNI editor G.S. Vasu gets talking to Professor Satyajit Mayer, who is the director of the National Center for Biological Sciences in Bangalore. Professor Mayer is a distinguished alumnus of IIT Bombay and has also studied at the Rockefeller University in the USA. Professor Mayer tells us why he believes that we need a whole lot of data and a whole lot of testing before we can come to any conclusions about COVID and the community spread. He also tells us that the economic cost of staying at home and riding out the virus may be humongous. More from Professor Mayer. Professor, you have observed the way virus is being handled elsewhere in the world and India. Do you see any difference in the approach towards dealing with it? I think the, the approach has been uh, somewhat proactive in terms of organizing a deterrence for the spread of infection, which is social distancing measures and, and also creating large-scale awareness, more proactive than other places. And also, in, in many ways, uh, bringing up an awareness of this and creating you know, the, the lockdown measures, which in some ways had to be implemented, but they have been you know, early in the game. The other difference, which I think is something we is perhaps not in the you know, line of what WHO has been recommending, which is to, to really open up and do a large-scale testing the wider population. And uh, that is very necessary for us to understand how long these lockdowns need to continue and the real extent of the spread is. So I'll straight come yes. to two arguments that seem to have turned a bit controversial. One yes. is that the virus that has traveled to India is less virulent. And then there is this MIT study, which suggests that the virus possibly may not survive in hot conditions. Is there enough scientific data to back these claims? No, I think there isn't. I mean, one, because we don't have the sequences of the viruses that are currently circulating in the Indian population. We likely have many imports because there are many people who have come, and each one would have brought some sample of what of the place that they have come from. So I don't think we have any singular variant that is likely to be circulating. We don't know as yet. We don't have enough sequence of the viruses that are infecting people in Indian uh, patients right now. Is a complete yes. lockdown the only solution to deal with the pandemic? You know, uh, I am totally incompetent to answer that question because a I think it's a it's a matter of how does one deal with population of this size and this level of inequity and this level of, you know, demographic distribution. You know, we do need to prevent the spread of this, of the infection of this virus by all means. If the virus were to spread like wildfire, like in New York City, for example, with the largest number of hospital density anywhere on this planet. And if that city with the spread of the virus is creaking at the scene, for emergency health. I mean, I shudder to think what could happen in our city. But at some point, uh, doctor, we need to lift this lockdown. We have to make decisions based on facts on the ground. So whether it's three weeks or more will really depend on what about the spread of the infection. So it's going to be somewhat a challenge if we don't have information. But when do you think is the right time when we can safely assess uh, that there is no risk of community spread in a country like India? I think we really need better model, better information. You know, I think some stimulus on trying to make such predictions you know, based on our local conditions and local situations are on. These simulations might take some time. They need the inf information you know, about the various. I have a feeling that we may see you know, extremely geographically specific responses after hmm. this lockdown. It may be that we don't need to have lockdown everywhere. Okay. We may need to have it uh, in a more dispersed manner. Places where there's very high density of population, like in our cities and in, you know, in low-income uh, communities where people live, you know, very cheap by jowl. It's really terrific uh, imposition, such lock lockdowns. How does one begin to function there? I think that should be our prime concern right now. Is there uh, any evidence to suggest that the virus is different depending on uh, the human race one belongs to? You know, I mean, there are there have been some in theories that the virus has a, uh, you know, well, of course, it binds to a particular receptor on the uh, airways, epithelia of the lung, uh, or, or of the nasopharyngeal tissues. And these receptors are what carries the virus into the cell. There has been some discussion in the scientific literature about the variations of the sequences of that receptor that is 
in the population that lives in India. But you know, India is such a vast country with so many different populations hmm. in a very really distinct population. I, I think we still don't have the full appreciation of the extent of the variation of this receptor for the virus. It is possible that there are some receptors which are not as good finders for the virus. Uh, it is possible that there are some receptors uh, that are better, in which case there are people who will be more susceptible. But honestly, we don't know enough. Going by the what we have seen in India thus far in the last two, three weeks, how do you rate the risk to our country? Well, I think very high. It is following a trend which is pretty much that one sees the trend that has happened in other places. I think one has to see what happens because of the lockdown. Okay. Whether that trend is going to taper off you know, substantially or not. Again, you know, as the testing capacity expands, we will have better estimates of how that, uh, whether the trend is, um, you know, flattening out or not. I think every measure, I think the, the ICMR is, I believe that they're trying to do is to ensure that these that the rate of the rise is not as steep. Perhaps that's where they're going now, I think. Now they're expanding their testing capacity, I think, quite rapidly. And, you know, once that is fully available, at least an indication will be there whether the lockdown is having the desired effect. The general opinion, at least from a layman's point of view, I mean, based on whatever we get to hear and read, is that if you don't see a rapid spike this week and the coming week, it's more than possible that India may not see the same kind of threat that has been witnessed elsewhere. Do you concur with that view? If it happens, you know, it would be great. If it doesn't happen, then there will, of course, be many explanations. You know, I mean, I think at this point we are feeling that, uh, you know, we need to know more about... We should still keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best? Yes. I mean, we have to keep our fingers crossed because we, we don't know how does this uh, virus move amongst our population and, and there's so many unknowns. There is this uh, perennial argument about the health cost and the economic cost, right. which uh, in your view should take the precedent. You know, one can't have one without the other. So, you know, it is extremely difficult balancing act. There has to be some immediate measures. In, just in terms of numbers, even if the virus has a very small, uh, you know, every hundred person badly off, is still a huge number in the Indian population if the virus were to take yeah. over. And at the same time, the lockdown has created as huge economic consequences and also incredible hardship for yeah. so many people. But, you know, if either way, suppose one doesn't do anything, I think the health cost will be extreme if the virus, you know, plays itself out like it has anywhere else. Uh, I, I see no reason why it will not play itself out like it has in other parts because at the end of the day, we're all the same species. So if we let that happen, we will, the economic cost of that will be humongous. I'm sure uh, your institute must be engaged in research on this already. You know, just before the country announced uh, uh, shutdown. M many of our institutes, scientific institutes, also were going into shutdown. Then the, the uh, principal scientific advisor, uh, Vijay Raghavan, mm -hmm. he, uh, his office issued a order which mm -hmm. indicated that many of the national institutes or government institutes could, in fact, uh, devote themselves uh, to a response to the COVID situation. And uh, we've decided to work along those lines. And of course, uh, you know, do whatever we can. Years of scientific knowledge and talent and, and our students are, you know, incredibly also committed. We are doing whatever we think is best for the immediate, for the medium and the long term. Thank you very much, Professor, for speaking to us. Thanks. Sure. Lot.